अस्सलाम वालेकुम सबसे पहले तो डू यू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश और इन उर्दू और मिक्सिंग अप एंड डाउन ओके एट द वेरी आउटसेट आई वुड लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट मिस्टर हसाम अहमद सिद्दीकी फाउंडर फाउंडिंग एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफ this institute i suppose this is also a kind of launching so congratulations on that um I'm very proud of you i remember we have been talking about it and you are determined and inshallah you will achieve your goals and like uh the distinguished panel here uh dr dilani um Dr. Mujib Hasan, uh, Group Captain Sultan Mahmood Halim, uh, Ambassador Salaudi Chaudhary, uh, Bishop Sahab, uh, Admiral Harun Sahab, and all the distinguished Rear Admiral Sahab, uh, all of you. Uh, it's a very diverse group. and it's interesting because we have been talking about different narratives i found all these discourses uh very important because they throw light on different dimensions christopher sorry i didn't notice uh different dimensions of uh, kashmir issue um dr dilani spoke from the ground reality how they are suffering dr afzal gave conflict uh, resolution theory although um, i i would say i mean i respect what dr afzal said but these are the rhetorics which are being fronted and these are being fronted to justify the positions that uh, india is taking uh if there was no pakistan before 47 there was no india before 47 i think this land was always a commemoration of princedoms fiefdoms statedoms it was in the mughal era that it brought a bit of uh, unity uh and a semblance of a uh, empire and then the british expanded it but uh, i am amazed when our indian counterparts say oh rape of mother india oh where was mother india there is no mother india india is a fictitious name basically it was bharat and if you talk about hindu what is a hindu hindu was in ancient times a geographic term and i would often tease my indian colleagues that you even get your name from us because it's the east side of river indus so we are the ones who bestow your name to you which really upsets them uh but these are narratives the different narratives and pakistan yes we are a muslim majority country but qaida azam clearly stated that all religions all faiths all ethnicities will have place in it as equal citizens so we don't have that issue we don't have that issue and here too when i see bishop sahab we see people of different faiths it's a reflection of what pakistan is about so this narrative also is unfair and then coming to kashmir kashmir has its own history its own language its own culture its own cuisine it's not just scarves it's also the food that you can't get over um there are people with their own sense of identity and at the time of partition the leaders the then leaders of india as you call it or bharat uh were claiming 
to have a secular state. But the kind of oppressions they did, they have problems in so many states. It's not just Kashmir. You look at Assam, you look at Nagaland, you look at other places. They have problems because they have problems in their approach towards their people. So it's not as simple as that. And of course, for the purpose of study, yes, we simplify concepts to be able to understand the issue. But by simplification, we miss the profundity of the issue. So when Group Captain Hali, who is, mashallah, an authority in this, has uh, written books on it, when he speaks of Hindutva, he speaks of the profound concept. What is it? And why is there uprising on this? It's very interesting that I was at a, conflict, a conference in Edinburgh about three years ago, and there were delegates from India as well. And uh, this was at the time that they abrogated 370 and all that. So I asked them, I said, why, why have they done that now? And she said, oh, because you are doing this with Gilgit and Baltistan. And I said, oh, so you're copying us. I'm very impressed, you know, but you're missing the point. You know, of course, it was very embarrassing for an Indian to think that they're copying Pakistan. But of course, I love saying things like that, punchlines. But coming down to diplomacy, uh, diplomacy is about making friends. And I think the preceding speakers have alluded to various steps that have been taken for peace. And as far as our foreign policy is concerned, we have taken inspiration from what Kaide Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah said, friendship with all. And we have worked on it. But unfortunately, uh, it has to be from both sides. It cannot be unilateral. Look at Pakistan's diplomacy, they have played an important role in different parts of the world, helping peace, uh, contributing to it. But unfortunately, when it comes to Kashmir, as preceding speakers have also uh, identified the root causes of the issue. Today we are talking about it. We are talking about it because not only is it the eve of, you know, the 5th August, which is also the eve of 14th August. So it is a very propitious moment, Hassan, for holding this event. And it is interesting, you all know, I'm sure, that uh, the issue of Jammu and Kashmir was taken to United Nations by India. They were, they were the ones who took it to the UN. And then when the resolutions were passed, they realized that it has backfired on them. Since 1948, there are several resolutions and they recognize Kashmir as an international dispute. And these formulas were not made because there were Hindus on that side and Muslims on this side. This was an agenda of partition, which was well thought through by the then leaders. And uh, that formula should have been respected. That didn't happen because Pakistan did not get the same share of resources that it merited. We did not have the wherewithal, and that's the time that the Indians, you know, took hold of it, and they violated the principle. Of, I often say this is basically an unfinished agenda of partition of our independence. But unfortunately, uh, now 
they don't even recognize it as at first it was you know international dispute then it was national dispute and now it's a totally internal matter and if anybody speaks of it is violating indian laws so they have gone from one extreme to another without any uh, logical uh, coherent argument and that comes back to what uh, guru captain hani said that is the philosophy of hindutva the nation we recognize dispute has uh, led to several wars and it is also well recognized that both the neighbors are neutral states so the world the international community cannot remain complacent and i'm sure you're all aware only early this year uh, the 48th session of oic council of foreign ministers was held in march in islamabad and if you go through the oic declaration you would be amazed at all the uh, statements that were made in this uh, declaration pertaining to kashmir uh they renewed their unwavering solidarity with the people of jammu and kashmir and expressed full support to the inalienable right to self determination determination in accordance with unsc resolutions and the oic resolution and the will of the people of kashmir they also condemned all the massive killings and violations of human rights that are taking place there oic foreign ministers also reiterated their uh, rejection of india's illegal unilateral action since 5th august 2019 aimed at altering demographic composition of the occupied territory and suppressing the realization of the inalienable right to self determination of the people of kashmir now here it is also interesting what group captain hali said about rape as an instrument of war and i would often when in my conversations with indian uh, counterparts i would say do you think that you can change the demography of kashmir by such uh, heinous acts do you think that a mother who gives birth to a child will give him that faith of her rapist no she will make him bigger and stronger and more committed muslim than ever so your policy is half baked it hasn't been thought through you think by doing this you can change the demography you cannot they have tried sending hindus to self here to change demography again because uh, if you have plebiscite as was promised uh, by the united nations by the international community it would still swing to the pakistan side but uh the indian thinkers philosophers believe that by killing uh kashmiri men or amputating them or raping the women they can change the ground reality i think it's about time that india also wakes up to the failure of its policies in kashmir it cannot continue like this and they will not succeed like this so they have to also have a wake up call i think deep down they do know that they do know that but they continue this oppressive manner and unfortunately although we have been raising this issue at international level and uh despite all our successful diplomatic efforts when it comes to uh india somehow they have unilaterally decided 
they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to discuss with you, Kashmir is an internal matter, they don't mean to consider it. Every time there was a dialogue, the two sides would come to the table, the first statement the Indian side would make is, Kashmir is part of India, now we can talk about other issues. And obviously, our delegation would walk out. Because this, I mean, how can you discuss a problem if you discuss a problem? So, this is a big challenge. Uh, now the question arises, the international community, which often talks so much about human rights and about uh, women's rights and about all these things, why no coverage even in the international media of the ground reality? Of course, India did block uh, the media coverage, but uh, there are now sophisticated ways of uh, knowing what is happening on the ground. And still, there is a blackout. Why so? The agenda at international level is also changing. There are now changing alliances, or I don't know if you want to use the word alliances or alignments, because you have Quad, and then you have I2, I2 U2, and then you have other interests where India is considered as a bigger partner for them. And when it comes to real politics, Dr. Afzal would know it better, uh, then morality and principles and things of this sort are often forgotten. And this is what is happening. But can we stay oblivious and can they stay oblivious? Can BJP party really succeed with this kind of agenda? The other day I was watching an Indian uh, program where the analyst was saying that if killing Muslims in general and Kashmiris in particular is in the interest of Modi uh, government, uh, alienating all the minorities, would it bring them in the forthcoming election? Would all this cruelty be acceptable to all the Indians? That is a question that Indians also have to do an introspection in. But meanwhile, I think uh, deep down there is a realization that if Kashmir is not resolved through peaceful uh, dialogue, the world peace will be a threat. And now the big powers, you can see what is happening in Ukraine, you can see what's happening in Taiwan, you can see what's happening in Palestine, you can see what's happening in Africa. Um, the world is becoming very complex. And in this complex world, hybrid is now the name of the game. And in that, I agree with what uh, Group Captain Hali said, that it is you, our youth, which have to now play your role in fighting this media because there's so much of onslaught of media against Pakistan and there is so much of uh, you know concealing of facts of what's happening in Kashmir. I think uh, in this hybrid war uh, the fifth generation uh, our youth will have to play its role. Thank you very much. <laughs>